Welcome to Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. I'm your host, Tigrila Gardenia, nature-inspired mentor and leadership coach. In this podcast, I share ancient and modern knowledge from biology to spirituality about the wondrous ways in which plants can help you lead a naturally conscious life. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 11. 11! 11! my favorite number. So I am really excited about this episode, not just because of the content, but also because of the number, you know, numerology and all. Today, we're going to talk about what nature shows us about life purpose. And this is one of those topics that we can go into so many different directions. So I am relying on you to leave me comments and leave me reviews, to come into the Naturally Conscious community and tell me more about what you want to learn about your life purpose relating to how the plant world and how nature in general, of which you are nature, can help you better understand and reach your life purpose. So I want to start off by um, kind of looking at your life purpose a step back for a second, okay? Your life purpose is your own. You have your own life purpose. And from a philosophical approach, you could think of your life purpose as being one small piece of your overall soul mission. And I'm going to go into that in a future episode because I really want to talk more about how your life Um, purpose fits into your soul mission. But in order to get there, I I have to kind of lay down a foundation. So this episode is really about helping us look at the natural world to get a better understanding that life purpose is not just a human thing, but instead life purpose exists in all species and how life purpose um, is similar to or differs from some of the functions or some of the um, achievements that you carry out in this lifetime. It's important to note that every organism in an ecosystem has a purpose. Every single type of organism from those that we love and revere like trees or, you know, butterflies and other kinds of plants and animals that we see and even lichen and rocks and all kinds of other species how they have, each one of them has a purpose. Even those that we either might not like or think of as something we kind of want to get rid of or at least not have them inside of our house. Um, But in reality, they all are important aspects. Every single one of these organisms also has what what you could think of as an archetype. So from a Damanhurian perspective, we say that there are 163 archetypes that human beings generally fall into, 183 if you take into consideration that about 20 of them have been lost. And I am going to talk about those because those are very near and dear to my heart since the ones that have been lost are known only to the plant world right now, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk specifically about an ecosystem. Let's get into the nitty gritty and try to understand about when we start to think about the parallels between human life purpose and the life purpose of other organisms, we should start more than anything into what is considered to be kind of these archetypes. Now we can think of these archetypes from the natural world and things like producers, right? Autotrophs, those that produce what others consume, specifically plants. Most plants are what's called autotrophic, which means that they can take from the natural environment and produce their own food, produce their own food, not only for them to consume, but also for others to consume. So they are the base. They are the most important aspects of any ecosystem. And, you know, this is how they photosynthesize. Then they take that, they turn those into carbohydrates, into, into sugars, and then they pass those along and they consume what they need. So autotrophs are one sort of archetype that you might expect. Then we have all the consuming types of archetypes. We have herbivores and carnivores and scavengers and omnivores. These are all the other types of beings that exist inside of an ecosystem that are extremely important because they consume what is being produced, right? This balance that happens. Then you have the decomposers, right? These are the types that move into decaying matter and break it all down. They are what makes matter decay, you could say. Bacteria and fungi, which are extremely important in an ecosystem because 
everything has waste. Everything takes things in and produces some form of waste. And if, and even our own bodies to a certain extent, once we're done using them become a form of waste. Therefore we need those decomposers and also what's called detrovores. And detrovores are the ones that also settle onto kind of decaying material, um, beetles and earthworms. They are that final phase in order to transform this all into something that you can use. I mean, if you think about your own compost, right? I take my compost, I take all of what is the material that I no longer use, organic material, whether that's your kitchen waste and your paper towels and things like this, and I put them into my compost pile and that is where the decomposers and the dentrovores um, kind of step into the process and they're able to then create something like soil, which therefore is enriching and brings nutrients and allows plants to take hold and other animals. It creates so many environments. So these are really important perspectives that we have autotrophs, you know, the, the producers, we have um, consumers, we also have the decayers, like the, the, the decomposers. And then we also have the pollinators, for example, like um, moths and bees and butterflies that help pollinate to regenerate and create. We also even have things like things, beings like our rocks and our sedentary uh, beings that also, as they start to break down through the elements, so take a rock that is being beaten down by the sun and is also having rain and maybe is batting up against something, another rock because of the wind or because of water rushing through, they start to break down and leach different kinds of minerals. So they are also nourishing the soil and nourishing the environment what it is. So each one of these beings has a general archetype that is filled out. And this is a mirror to you as an individual, as a human being. You have a general archetype that you fit into. And your life purpose is within that archetype. In other words, what you came here to do, you were given a series of talents and skills. You have a series of abilities within you that are within a broad archetype. Now, let me be very clear that this isn't like saying I'm an artist and therefore I can only make art. That's not what I'm talking about when it talks about archetypes. Archetypes are much broader. It's more of the way that I experience the world again, but also more of how do I produce things? What is my kind of general go-to way of thinking. Um, my mother, for example, watches tons and tons and tons of crime shows. She loves kind of like, you know, the small town with the little like local PD detective that um, happens to investigate the murders that happen around the little town and everybody kind of knows each other. And each one of these detectives or police officers or even writers um, or whomever is the main character of this has a specific way of solving these cases. Some of them solve them because they are puzzle fillers. They like to fill in and, and look for the puzzle pieces. Another ones are more curious and therefore they gather lots and lots of information and are able to sort of get to know the people while they're in this. So they're more maybe psychologically focused. Another one maybe has more historical, so they're able to relate things back to historical times. All of these are detectives or, um, you know, mur murder solvers for, you know, for lack of a better term. I'm sure there's a better term, but it's just not coming to me right now. All of them can do this and their life purpose is around solving these kinds of murders or solving these kinds of experiences. But each one of them has a series of different characteristics that is how they do this. Their deep patterns are completely different. And this is an important distinction because as you're starting to understand your archetype and the thing that brings together the elements of your life purpose, it's not so much about looking for, I'm supposed to be a criminologist or whatever, that is kind of one way for you to deal with it, but it's more of, are you about, are you somebody who tends to 
work with the psychology of people? Are you usually a communicator? Are you more somebody this if you are you more somebody who takes in data and who likes, you know, solving puzzles? What you're trying to do is get to a better understanding of what are the patterns in which you consume or work with information. Do I generate stuff? Am I a producer? Am I somebody who takes in raw information and is able to bring them in? Like maybe a visionary who's able to see kind of how things are aligning and putting them out. Are you instead somebody who's more of a consumer, right? I'm somebody that consumes information that comes to me in a way and I'm able to use it for myself for some other good. Am I somebody who instead is more of a decomposer, right? Am I somebody who instead breaks things down in their final phase. So my job is less about coming into a project early on, like a visionary might come in, like a producer might come in and producer, I mean like an ecosystem producer, like an autotroph, um, or am I instead somebody who's more of a decomposer? I come in in the final phases. And this is important because when you're trying to understand how your deep patterns and your archetypes sort of fit into one another, your life purpose becomes much more clear. So if you think about the environments in which you've lived in, and again, they don't always have to be the same environments, you know, they could be your university environment versus your first jobs versus how you grew up versus as you became more mature, the areas that you created, maybe the groups that you um, of friends that you have or the types of um, the types of activities you like to carry out. They could all be really different. But the question is, do the roles that you take in them always seem to be kind of the same? Like, do you always end up being um, the secretary of the club or a treasurer, for example? Do you tend to be somebody who uh, becomes a spokesperson or instead are you somebody who just naturally likes to crunch through data and analyze that data? Are you more um, inquisitive or are you more of waiting for people to give you information? All of these help you better understand what your life purpose might be. And they help you see your role in whatever ecosystem you are in. Remember, we were talking about adaptation, right? Adaptation does not mean that I change who I am. It means that I change how I use my characteristics in order to be best suited for the environment in which I'm in. So when you go looking around some of the environments that you've been in, the ecosystems in which you've been in, the ones you felt the best in, what are the general roles that you've been carrying out naturally? What are the things that you're more inclined to do that you feel more comfortable doing? And when you start to look at things from the perspective of producers, all the different types of consumers, because remember, there's not just one kind of consumer, right? There's a herbivore, a carnivore, uh, um, again, a scavenger, an omnivore. All of these help you better understand what are the archetypes that you tend, what is the archetype that you tend to rely on the most? And then when you look at that archetype and you start to understand, do you decompose? Do you come in at the end of projects? Do you like being somebody that closes things up and ticks that final box? Or do you just like to open things up? Then you start to step in closer and closer to, well, what is my purpose in doing that? Right. So the purpose of an autotroph, for example, of a plant is to take in sunlight and to be able to produce this um, first basic element of nutrition that can be then distributed, not just used by the plant, but also distributed. So distributed out to other kinds of beings within the ecosystem that might need it and their own bodies become food for others. Like, are you more of an edible plant? Are you more of instead a um, someone, a, a beautiful plant? Do you tend to glue other, other plants together? Are you more like a grass that holds the soil in place in order for there not to be erosion? So your um, root systems tend to tie things together. If you start to think of yourself as the different types of plants and the roles that they carry out, of course, you could do this with any species, by the way, but you know me, I'm always going to rely on plants. If you start to look at the roles in which you tend to fit in, you start to get an understanding of your base archetype. And then from there, you can ask the next question, which is, 
how do I use this? What it tends to be the thing where I feel like, wow, I've really accomplished something in the group that I'm in or in the project that I'm working on. When you feel like that's the accomplishment, what does that accomplishment tend to be like? Again, it's not about the individual thing. It's not like, I don't know, um, back when I was working at Microsoft, I shipped you know, a, a version of Windows, or I worked on, you know, tablet PC. It's not that that is the most important. I mean, of course, hey, I'm proud of that work, right? I'm really proud of those accomplishments. And those accomplishments are important. But that's not the thing we're looking at. I'm like, what are the roles that I tended to take on? And personally, in all of those projects, I was a project manager. I was somebody who really loved communicating across the different groups, and then also loved to be the hub of information. And in almost all the projects, what made me an excellent producer, because I was a producer when I used to produce large events, what made me excellent in my work in software development and in places like Microsoft and Real Networks, and what made me an amazing kind of conduit even when I first arrived at Dominher was my ability to be a hub, to collect large amounts of information and then distill it into a way that I could communicate. That is my base deep pattern, you should, you can say. And then from there, I learned that how I use this is to make the dreams of others come true. I am a visionary, not in the perspective of having the original idea. I am a visionary in being able to take things that people can't see how they click together and click them together and then communicate in a super easy and simple way what that vision looks like. And that's what I do for the majority of my clients. Like when we're working, what I'm doing is asking curious questions. I'm supporting you to be able to make those clicks of all these disparate things that you have. And so as a coach and a mentor, I'm helping you see how these things about you come together so that you feel comfortable and get the courage and the confidence to be able to express them in how they are. That's my life purpose. My life purpose is to make the dreams of others come true. I don't need anything else than that. And the way I do it, the patterns, the archetypes that I hold to do that is that gathering of information and of seeing how it comes together in a form that's right outside the box. And this is the reason why the plants and I get along so well. I don't have a traditional linear thinking, even though I can be really very linear. I'm very linear in the way that I communicate Things come in and I can put them in an order and I can easily communicate them out. But I have can put in things that don't seem to make sense together when you look at them just outside of yourself. It's my hub that brings them together and that's my archetype. And that's what I learned from the ecosystem services. The creation of an ecosystem, of a community, of a general area is exactly that. It's all these individual parts and how those come together. And so looking at an ecosystem helps you better understand your own life purpose, which is made up of your archetype, right? That general thing that you do, the deep patterns you carry out as part of that archetype. And then the overall results that you tend to obtain when you best use your archetype and your deep patterns. That is your life purpose. My life purpose is connected to other people. And I am making these dreams come true because it is important for humanity that your dreams come into existence. The people that come to work with for me that come to work with me are people who are have a mission, have a life purpose that is important. And my role is to make sure that whatever it is, you confidently do it. And so that is how I have been able to work so closely with the plants to get outside of the human logic and bring these things into being to help others step out of the conditioning and out of the logic that they historically have had in order for them to be able to express and make that dream come true. So it's really important for you to discover what your life purpose is 
not just because it's a nice tagline to have, but because it makes it so much easier for you to take certain steps. It helps you understand how those deep patterns of expression, how the archetypes, the archetype that you tend to be, how those fit together in order for you to accomplish something in this lifetime or some things in the case of some of us in this lifetime. So I hope this has been helpful for you to really see how important it is to discover your life purpose and how working together with the plant world, asking plants how they best understood their role inside of an ecosystem. Because remember, yes, sure, the majority of plants are producers, but not all of them are producers. And even if they are producers, they're autotrophs. It doesn't mean they always produce the exact same thing in the exact same way. Some are producing for others. Some are producing for themselves. Some are producing in a small knit group. Some are producing in a wider. Some are operating individually, like a house plant. Some are producing in a, a giant forest. Some are more in a temperate, so they have to know when they produce. Some are in the shade, so they don't always have the opportunity. There are lots of variations, lots of patterns, lots of ways of producing. And so when you even understand your archetype, then you have to go one step deeper to understand how you carry out that archetype so that then you can confidently apply those patterns to whatever project or whatever challenge that you are presently working on. So I hope this has been clear. If you have any questions at all, you know where to find me in the Naturally Conscious community. This is the place where we're having these discussions. And if you want to specifically go deeper and find your own deep patterns, your own archetype in order to understand your life purpose, not so much as just an individual thing, but the life purpose connected to the greater good of humanity, please reach out to me because this is exactly what I do. This is my life purpose is to help you discover and carry out your life purpose on a regular basis with full confidence. All right. That's episode 11 of what nature shows us about our life purpose. If you have any questions, ask me in the Naturally Conscious community, and I will see you again next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Reconnect with Plant Wisdom. Intro and outro music by Steve Shuley and Poinsettia from The Singing Life of Plants. So join me, Tigirila Gardenia, and my plant collaborators next time on Reconnect with Plant Wisdom.